Today we are looking at the interior of this 2024 Toyota Highlander Platinum. So how luxurious and how amazing is this interior? We're about to find now out. Now let's move on to the interior. While we have a lot of good styling on the exterior, we still have a lot of luxury on the interior. So let's get into the it. Door panel. We have some faux wood, leather, and a lot of storage down below. Just not enough to hold a 40 ounce Stanley cup. Moving on to the seats, we have a nice quilted design that is exclusive on the Platinum, and these will be made of real perforated leather. Now, moving to the seat adjustments, these will be 10-way power adjustable, including the two-way lumbar support, and we have illuminated door sills down below that. Just this little strip of LED lights will be illuminated. Now, these running boards are pretty much useless since it's really hard to get a good foot on it and it's so easy to get into the car anyway now take a look at this cabin starting with the steering wheel this will be very nicely weather wrapped and heated and the button will be located down there we also have a nice place to store something and a lot more storage throughout the cabin but we'll get to that later Moving on to the gauge clusters, these will be fully digital and fully customizable. I would like to see Toyota add a different look to them, or just be able to change the look. Because I have seen that on different cars, and I would like Toyota to adopt that. Moving on to materials, we have the best of the best on this Highlander Platinum. We have soft touch material at the top. We have some really interesting aluminum material gloss black, and a lot of faux wood around the center console. Moving on to storage, we have a lot of it in this Highlander. We have a little tray right here with a wireless phone charger, another little place right here, two cup holders, a little slot for your phone if you're not using the wireless charger, and we have a lot of space in the center console. We even have a little bin to store things, and this is removable. We have a 12 volt socket, and I think Toyota has done a great job with integrating a lot of storage into this Highlander. Now, my one complaint is that this isn't the grippiest material. I do have a pretty grippy silicone case, but for people that don't have a grippy phone case, that might be an issue. Now, we do have three charging USB ports down there, as well as a second 12 volt outlet. And just take a look down in the center console. We have all our drive modes and some other controls. Now let's bring our attention to the climate controls. This will be in gloss black, which is not the best material for buttons. We have window defrost, we have two zones up here, and we also have three stages of heated and ventilated seats. One change is that you can see the temperature within the knob, which is a nice touch that Toyota has added. Now, if you look at this button here, we have the front window and a wiper that will remove any ice or snow that is by the area of the wiper so that you can use them in the cold. Now, let's move on to the shifter and camera. We do have the same manual gear selector, and that will bring us a very high resolution 360 degree backup camera with active trajectory. Now you can't even change the color of the vehicle if you want to, and you have different ways to adjust the active trajectory and different views for the camera. Now when you put it in drive, you can get a view right here as you can see, and you can even put it on auto if you want to. So this is a very helpful feature for people that don't drive as well, and I think Toyota has done a great job with these lately. Moving up top, we do have a digital rear view mirror, a normal rear view mirror, and we also have a large panoramic sunroof up top that lets in a lot of light and stretches all the way back to the second row. One thing I also want to mention is that you have a little mirror here so that you can spy on your kids in the back, and that also serves as a sunglasses holder. Moving on to the passenger side, I am pretty excited about this one since this has always been a strength for Toyota. Starting with the door panel, we have that same glossy wood and a lot of storage down below. 
The seats will be basically the same, we have the same quilted design, and we also get 8 ways of power adjusting over 10. As you can see, Toyota has done an amazing job of space, materials, and comfort. Now that we're finally inside, let me show you around this passenger side. Coming to materials, this is basically the same, you get some soft touch material, and you also have aluminum, which makes this whole setup look like a fly swatter. Now we have a lot of storage here, we have a large shelf right here, but I do wish it was a little bit grippier and a little bit wider. Now, there is a USB-C port right down there, but I do wish, like in the Grand Highlander, that they would put it around there so that you could charge your device or whatever you've got right there. Now, the glove box is pretty abundant. You get a lot of space in there, and you also can stack up many things, and it closes super easily. Now, we do have the floor mats, and we also have sun shades that fold down and act as a mirror. Now let's move on to the second row. First impressions, it gets pretty dark back here even though we have a panoramic sunroof and I would like Toyota to make improvements to their lights. Now moving on to the door panel, it is pretty simple. We have a sunshade here and we also have some glossy wood trim, weather and a lot of storage down below. Getting in is pretty easy and the seats will be the same quilted leather but you get manual reclining and sliding and all of the switches are numbered. Now let's get in and see what we've got. Down here, it is pretty simple, we get a third zone of climate control, heated seats for both passengers, and we have two USB-C ports and a household style outlet down below. Now down here, we do have two more cup holders and this is not removable unlike the Grand Highlander. I would like Toyota to do that next time, but we also have a seat back pocket which can be kind of tight sometimes. Now let's move on to the third row and see what we get. To get into the third row, you can pull this lever down here, or there's another one up here, but it doesn't really matter so I'll use this one for now. There are a lot of things going around on the internet saying that the Highlander has a really unusable third row, and well, they're not wrong for bigger people. Now I'd say people past 5'5 five five would not be very comfortable back here. The thigh support is very lacking. You see my knees are very high and the seat is not slid all the way back and I still have zero legroom. You do have air vents and cup holders but no USB ports and this is very disappointing because this is over $50,000 you guys. So this third row is usable only for small kids but other than that, Definitely do not put adults back here. Now let's move on to the cargo area and see what kind of space we get back here. To open it up, you can use the key or the hands-free access. And take a look at this room, you guys. This is basically in the middle of the segments, not a bad place to be. And you also have a floor liner that goes up on the back of the third row seats in case you fold it down. Now you also have storage underneath the floor for spare tire supplies and a little bit of storage for the cargo cover. And folding down the third row seats is actually not too bad. We don't have power third row seats, but we can pull this lever on the top to just fold down the headrest as it goes down. And then it will just fold flat. And same thing to the other side. Just make sure to fold it down relatively slowly or the headrest will get stuck on the second row seats. This will expand to 48.3 cubic feet. You also can fold down the second row for a maximum of 84.3 cubic feet. Folding the third row back up is pretty easy. You just pull this little handle and then you can use the top lever to recline it at your liking. 